Well, yeah, well, it's, 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 it's instructional that you have called it a crisis. Otherwise, I'd like to borrow Chris Okotie's language, uh, make a few modifications, because I, instead I prefer to call it the vindictive purposelessness, political diabolism. Um, in my own opinion, I think that the governor, the deputy governor, is, um, is crying wolf and is trying to blackmail um, the governor into adopting him as his successor. If you listen to the governor's speech, he says, look, the deputy governor has not even had the decency to approach him over his ambition. So as far as he's concerned, he's, uh, he's, not, uh, he's, not aware on of, he's not aware officially. He may have been hearing from the grapevines, but he doesn't know. One, number two, he's told his retinue of aides, including the deputy governor, the SSG, that we can't be talking about political permutations one and a half years to the end of a tenure. There are goals to be achieved. There are roads to be completed. There are projects that we must round off. So why don't we spend the greater part of this year? The elections are next year. So let's spend the greater part of this year in completing the uncompleted project so that by next year we can settle down and do you know, politics proper. But you know what they call the principle of first mention? The deputy governor feels that the earlier he comes out to tell everybody he has an ambition, maybe the earlier people will begin to um, uh, consider it. So for many of us, it came as a shocker. That's why when you use the word crisis, uh, we were shocked because we have seen the governor and the deputy governor as best of friends. I, I would have thought that the crisis would have been needless because they were best of friends, all right? And I say so against the backdrop that when the deputy governor, when the governor was ousted from the APC in the build up to his second term, he approached the PDP that gave him the ticket, but with a condition sine qua non, which was that you would give us the position of the deputy governor. You can't come to us new from APC and then you want governor, you want um, deputy, you must cede that to us. The governor stoutly stood with his deputy and said, Look, this guy, we have been through the thick and thin together. We are going to rough it together. And against all odds, he untwisted the party to ensure that Philip Shaibu, his deputy, went along with him. And that actually was the beginning of the rift between the governor and, you know, the PDP. Because they felt that he was unbending. How? I mean, why didn't you just sacrifice the deputy governor? Then you can have your, you know, governor's ticket. Let the party give you another deputy governor. How be it from the same senatorial district with the governor? And the governor said, you know, no. So uh, this is a, this is a, there must be something that is, there must be this, you know, camaraderie in between two of them. You remember that the former governor of um, River State tried to denigrate the office of the deputy governor in Edo State yeah. with the popular, who is his father? And how can a small boy, a deputy governor, in his language? So that gives you an idea of how our governors consider their deputy, but not how Governor Gordon Obasaki considers you know, his own, because he gave him all the latitude. He took two pages in two national dailies, full pages, to defend his, his deputy against his fellow governor who they meet at the level of the Nigeria's Governors Forum. And then if you also look at the manner of speaking, the age difference between them, I'm sure it's probably like 12, 14 years. So be, apart from being a governor and deputy, you would have thought it would have been an elder brother and a younger brother in a relationship. So where the deputy governor uh, got the, this energy from all this, uh, this card is thrown into the air that the governor wants to you know, impeach him comes to those of us who are political watchers as a surprise. Because we saw two you know, um, great friends who had been you know, through the thing Tick and thin uh, together, but you know what? Um, uh, ambitious ambition is. Lord Acting was the one that says, "Power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely." Patrick told me added to it. He said, "Continue stay in power makes a man mad," and I think that's where the governor has a challenge. He's calculated that there are three senatorial districts. You have the Edo South, where the governor is from. I feel like the Bini, the you know the Benis. Mm -hmm. Then you have the Asans, the Edo Central, and you have the Edo North. Between 1999. 2023, as we speak now, you have had the deputy governor, the North, I do not, where the current deputy governor is from, has had deputy governor and governor between them. 
or Gadome, 1999 to 2007, under Chief Lucky um, Then, Senator, Comrade Senator Adam Sashomole from 2008. The same senatorial district. The same senatorial district. Wow. 2008, for another, you know, uh, eight years. Then, and then, as he left as from a do not, the man who is now deputizing, you see, is, is almost back to back. The man who is deputized, who is now deputy to the present governor, is also from a do not. So and the governor is thinking that for fairness, so equity. The wants Look, to yes, go to another senatorial district. And I can tell you that it is nothing more than that. There isn't a problem, you know, anywhere. Um, the deputy governor just got wind, perhaps it all felt by body language that I may not be my senatorial district may not be this man. And rightly so too. The minister designate, Aruba Kamomo, yeah. is uh, um, from you know Edo North, when the other senatorial in a district. And the governor being an institutional person, felt, you know what, for equity, for fairness, and for political balance, so that some people do not feel politically ostracized. Yeah. But let's be fair. And um, he, before the before now at the last election, the governor offered the deputy senatorial. Why don't you go to a senator in your senatorial district? But I think that he chickened in because he knew also that his erstwhile political godfather Adam Sashomole <laughs> had already gotten the ticket of APC. Wow. Squaring with Adam Sashomole, I just think that he told himself that he can't win that election, so no need. All right, that would have been an upscale for him because we have seen deputy, we have seen governors become. Senators. Oh, yeah. So, what is the big deal about the deputy governor becoming a senator? The deputy governor to um, the River State governor is presently in the upper chamber, in the red chamber. So, uh, when you are, you know, over, I don't, I don't mind a drive, but where you are overdriven, that and that's my personal opinion. It's going to seem like it's got to be me or nobody else, and I don't think that anybody in life should. Has, should feel entitled to life is a privilege. If you are breathing oxygen, you shouldn't feel it's your right yeah. because there are those who look healthier than you who are not breathing in the same, you know, oxygen at whatever level. Appreciate um, life. But once you begin to feel entitled, you begin to suffer from what psychology calls, you know, acute megalomania. You have an overrated estimation of yourself, and I don't think that's healthy, not just for politics but for life as well.